We'll take a look now at the model view controller paradigm. You hear this a lot when talking about Rails, that Rails is segregated into this MVC sections of an app. But I think it's useful to spend a minute talking about how that works, because it'll make you a better Rails developer. So first off, the model. Unsurprisingly, that's the piece of the app that interacts with the database. Rails apps don't have to have databases, and sometimes they don't. But for the most part, this is a database-backed application. That's why we're using Rails. So Active Record, the Rails model library, is really an object relational mapping library, an ORM library. It's the way Rails allows us to use object-oriented terms to interact with the database. And the nice thing is Rails abstracts the database queries, the actual SQL statements that go on, regardless of the flavor of database, whether it's a MySQL database or an Oracle database, abstracts that away behind us so we don't have to worry about it. So if we turn back to this sample blog application that I've written, a simple Rails blog, you can see here that this on the home page of the blog, show me the first few posts in date descending order, the New York Mets post, the Hello World post, the Premier League post. I can look back here at my console window and I can see what has happened. Rails has done some things for me. You can see a bunch of SQL queries, unsurprisingly, because we have to get the database records out of the database and serve them up to the user. That's the model piece and the files for that. And again, we're just covering an overview here. They live in the app models directory. And typically there is one model file, a Ruby file, in this case, post.rb for each corresponding database table. Not always true, but for the most part, that's a good rule of thumb. What can I do in the model class? I can specify validations. The model files are where we as developers say, Hey, a post should always have a title. You can see on line two. You can see on line three, a post should always have an excerpt and should always have content. Those things should not be empty. In this blog app, a post should always have at least one category. I can also specify associations. How do my individual model pieces fit together? I can see on line nine and 10, on line 12, on line 14, that a post belongs to a user. There's a foreign key relationship between an individual post and a user who is the author of that post. So the model allows me to specify how the relationships between individual models work, and that's really useful to do some powerful and very terse and very elegant coding down the road. I can also define methods for domain elements in the model class. You can see on line 16, there's a two underscore s method defined. If I just want to print one of these post things to the screen, that's the two string method. And it's just going to return the title of the individual post. We'll move on to the individual view, the three pronged Rails application. Views are the part of the app that serve up HTML pages or perhaps JavaScript, JSON, XML, CSV files. The nice thing is I can do a lot with different MIME types, right? Different types of responses that I send back to the user in their browser. And the view is what serves them up. You can see here this index.html.erb file simply says, what should an individual post a detail page, a show one post page look like? This is the actual listing page for a post. I could show you also the individual post, the show file. Gives me an H1 tag on line one and serves up the title of the post. The one we were looking at just before was the listing page for post. That would correspond to this. Here's the show one post page. You can see that New York Mets is the title. That's an H1. It's got some content. It's got some metadata, the category, etc. And here is that corresponding show one post page. It's mostly HTML with some Ruby embedded in it. When I'm serving up views, of course, with a web application, I need to serve up CSS, perhaps some JavaScript. We'll look extensively at the Rails asset pipeline. How do I serve those CSS and JavaScript elements up in a handy, easy to maintain fashion? And lastly, the C, the controller. That's the glue that mediates between the incoming requests based on the routing table, based on the URL, like slash posts slash five. The controller says, okay, if I need to show one post, I'm gonna have to go over to the model and I can see it there on line nine and find the individual post from the database, grab that post data, its title field, its content field, 
get the corresponding comments, get the user who's the author of the post, and then serve up the view that corresponds to it. So the controller is really the glue, interacting with the model, serving up the view. It's also the place where I process forms like update forms and insert forms. It's the place where I'd handle things like user authentication. And you can see here that those controllers live in slash apps slash controllers. In this case, posts underscore controller dot RB is a mostly Ruby file that allows me to specify the individual controller actions. So model view controller paradigm, a useful way to organize an application for easy development and easy maintainability going forward.